In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The Lord be with you. Let us pray. O God, who made of the abbot Saint Bernard, a man consumed with zeal for your house, and a light shining and burning in your church, grant, through his intercession, that we may be on fire with the same Spirit, and walk always as children of light. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God for ever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Ezekiel. The word of the Lord was addressed to me as follows. I mean to display the holiness of my great name, which has been profaned among the nations, which you have profaned among them. And the nations will learn that I am the Lord. It is the Lord who speaks. When I display my holiness for your sake before their eyes, then I am going to take you from among the nations and gather you together from all the foreign countries and bring you home to your own land. I shall pour clean water over you, and you will be cleansed. I shall cleanse you of all your defilement and all your idols. I shall give you a new heart and put a new spirit in you. I shall remove the heart of stone from your bodies and give you a heart of flesh instead. I shall put my spirit in you and make you keep my laws and sincerely respect my observances. You will live in the land which I gave your ancestors. You shall be my people, and I will be your God. The Word of the Lord I shall pour clean water over you, and all your sins will be washed away. A pure heart create for me, O God. Put a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, nor deprive me of your Holy Spirit. I shall pour clean water over you, and all your sins will be washed away. Give me again the joy of your help. With a spirit of fervor, sustain me that I may teach transgressors your ways, and sinners may return to you. I shall pour clean water over you, and all your sins will be washed away. For in sacrifice you take no delight. Burnt offering from me you would refuse. My sacrifice, a contrite spirit, a humbled contrite heart, you will not spurn. I shall pour clean water over you, and all your sins will be washed away. Alleluia! Alleluia! Make me grasp the way of your precepts, and I will muse on your wonders. Alleluia! The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. Jesus began to speak to the chief priests and elders of the people in parables. The kingdom of heaven may be compared to a king who gave a feast for his son's wedding. He sent his servants to call those who had been invited, but they would not come. Next, he sent some more servants. Tell those who have been invited, he said, that I have my banquet all prepared, my oxen and fattened cattle have been slaughtered. Everything is ready. Come to the wedding. But they were not interested. One went off to his farm, another to his business, and the rest seized his servants, maltreated them and killed them. The king was furious. He dispatched his troops, destroyed those murderers and burnt their towns. Then he said to his servants, The wedding is ready. But as those who were invited proved to be unworthy, 
Go to the crossroads in the town and invite everyone you can find to the wedding. So these servants went out on the roads and collected together everyone they could find, bad and good alike. And the wedding hall was filled with guests. When the king came in to look at the guests, he noticed one man who was not wearing a wedding garment and said to him, How did you get in here, my friend, without a wedding garment? And the man was silent. Then the king said to the attendants, Bind him hand and foot and throw him out into the dark, where there will be weeping and grinding of teeth. For many are called, but few are chosen. The Gospel of the Lord Today's scripture speaks of God's great love for us. In the first reading, we hear how he desires to personally take us and clean us to make us his again. And in the gospel, like the king, we hear how he never stops calling us. But often, however, beautiful these images of God is, we either find it hard or don't want to believe in this image. Just like the Israelites in the first reading, who despite experiencing what God had done for them, they still rejected him. Or like the guests in the gospel who believe that their own things were more important than the king's invitation to dine with him. Sometimes, we even go so far as to silence God and his message by persecuting those who bring us the good news. I believe how we respond to God's love depends on the level of our relationship with him. Just like in any human relationship, the stronger our relationship is with that person, the more trusting and open we would be. So too, our level of trust and openness to God is dependent on the level of our relationship with Him. The good news, however, is that whatever level we may be, because of God's great love, no matter how much we reject Him, because of our lack of trust, He never gives up inviting us to this relationship of love with Him. He gives us many chances and opportunities to choose whether to continue rejecting or to accept his invitation. And if we wish to accept his invitation, the gospel today tells us that we need to do our part because relationship is two-way. Just as how the guests were required to wear the wedding garment, we need to do our part by living out our baptism because doing so builds and deepens our relationship with him. And what does this baptismal garment consist of? St. Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, explains this garment in the context of an armor. He says that our garment consists of truth as our belt, righteousness as our breastplate, faith as our shield, and the word of God as our sword. A good time to ask ourselves, in my daily life, am I someone who is truthful, righteous, faithful, and who lives out God's word in my life? From the Psalms, to accept God's invitation is to allow God to clean us. Because to walk away from God is to turn to sin and temptation, and these only soils our baptism garment. And so to allow God to cleanse us is through the sacrament of reconciliation. For in this sacrament, we are invited to reflect on the areas and times we have fallen short of accepting his invitation to love. And in this sacrament, we are challenged to name our shortcomings so that we may be free to celebrate and experience his mercy and love again. As we celebrate the memorial of St. Bernard today, we see in his life that this was what he did. He did his part of living his baptismal garment by being open to God's will. We are told that because of his love for God, he forgo his own desire for a quiet, solitary and contemplative life to travel around France, Germany and Italy to bring about reconciliation. Let us therefore 
be inspired by this saint today and always, that we may accept God's invitation to love by doing our part, living out our baptism and for allowing God to cleanse us, that God's kingdom may reign here in this world and that Christ's love and mercy may be visible and relevant in this world through our life. And so in response to God's word, let us pray the prayer Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Let us pray. May the word we have received, O Lord, as we honour Saint Bernard, work its effect in us, so that strengthened by his example and instructed by his teaching, we may be caught up in love of your incarnate word, who lives and reigns for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace and continue to live our baptism. <laughs>